Continuing in chapter 3 of Corinthians, uh, we're just going to read and then continue along uh, and, and uh, just speak as I feel inspired to. Uh, do we begin again to commend ourselves or need we as some others epistles of commendation to you or letters of commendation from you? Ye are our epistle written in our hearts known and read of all men. For as much as ye are manifestly declared to be the epistle of Christ ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God, not in the tables of stone, but in fleshly tables of the heart. And such trust have we through Christ to Godward. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God. I'm going to stop there real quick because this is what I was talking about in my previous video a little bit. Um, and I want to add that to me, this is another area where he is, where Paul is showing the, the contrast between the letter, the spirit, the law and faith, uh, works and grace. This is like the, the two different systems, the two things that we're operating, right? Um, and shows the contrast between them and how one is only the ministration of death and condemnation. One is the, is, is by the law is the strength of sin by the law is the knowledge of sin. Again, that's because we have this flesh. It is corrupt. The, the law was not put in place to justify anyone. It was put in place to expose sin, to increase the trespass, to shut every mouth as guilty before God, to, as a magnifying glass, like a diagnosis of what the flesh is, what sin is. And again, shutting every mouth as guilty before God, showing that all are sinners, all have fallen short of the glory of God, and all need a savior. Pointing as a schoolmaster, the law as a schoolmaster, pointing to Jesus Christ, the faith that should come, the promise that was given to Abraham and Jesus, who was the, the seed, the heir of all things, pointing to Jesus Christ so that the promise would be by faith, so that all who believe in Jesus Christ would be given eternal life, everlasting life, never to be plucked from the Father's hand, never to be uh, removed from him. You cannot be unborn again. No, you are you believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. He died for our sins, was buried, and rose again on the third day for our justification. You believe you are saved eternally. You are permanently born again. You cannot unborn yourself. That's so. That concept just doesn't make any sense. We do not have more power than God to make ourselves unborn, right? We, sin is not more powerful than God. Like people say that, oh, you sin, and then you have to go back and repent of your sins, and then you're born again again. One, no one is justified by the works of the law and you repenting of your sins is not a satisfactory offering for the forgiveness of sins. No, the blood of Jesus Christ is the one and only offering that was made, offered up through the eternal spirit. The blood of Jesus Christ is the only offering that is acceptable to God and it's already been paid. He was buried and he rose again on the third day. So we believe, we come to remembrance of his finished redemptive work when we make mistakes or if we're having an issue in our conscience again or we're dealing with fear or anxiety or whatever or like many of us, we're in checkmate situations. What do we do? We, we remember that Jesus Christ is our life. We remember that our father is absolutely working out everything for our good and we can trust him. Oh, thank you, Lord. So again, he's saying here, or he's showing again, I see the differences between like the letter and the spirit, the law and grace, works and grace, all that stuff, and making more and more distinctions so that people, not people, so that we would understand and grow in the knowledge of Christ, laying hold of him and not being carried off as spoil. Even in our trials and tribulations, not thinking that this discipline, which God disciplines every child whom he loves, so it's not something to be afraid of. I sure don't like it often. Um, as it says, like, I think it's in Peter, is that uh, it's not enjoyable when you go through it, but it leads to the peaceable fruit of righteousness. It leads to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. It leads to gaining Christ, right? This right here. Christ is ministered and it, uh, and the knowledge of him is written in our hearts 
by the Spirit of the living God, the impress of Christ by the Holy Spirit, again, you, you can't get that through law keeping. You can't gain Christ. You can't get the newness of life in a system that is the letter that kills, the shadow of good things to come. You cannot get the reality of life in Christ through a system that was a shadow of things to come. Again, the mediator is not the law. It is Jesus Christ. Our advocate with the Father is not our dead works in religion trying to keep commandments in the law. I don't care. However however you try to compartmentalize, it's the Mosaic law, it's this law, it's that law, it's, it's the uh, living commandments of Christ or people want to say, it doesn't matter how you try to compartmentalize it. If you are bringing in leaven to try and puff yourself up in the flesh and deceive people so that they, so that you would carry them off as spoiled because you want your own self-righteous dead works to be accepted before God, you're still a liar. It doesn't matter how you try and disguise the language or cover up or what kind of complicated costume you wear. You're still a liar and you're still bringing in leaven. You're still bringing in accursed or false gospels, whichever one it is, depending on who's coming, because we can expose that by preaching Christ and him crucified. And the truth shines and does its thing, right? It exposes the darkness. The darkness comprehends it not. And then the darkness also rears its ugly head and like starts spouting lies and, and, and heresy and, and hypocrisy and all this stuff. And we see what people really believe when the gospel shines, when we preach Christ and him crucified. So there is that distinction that the light and the darkness, right? The, the law and not that the, not that the law is darkness because the law is good, holy, and, and we know that, but we are carnal soul to sin. I think that's some, somewhere in Romans 8. Just to paraphrase, but again, the law was not there to bring righteousness. If righteousness could have been by the law, then Christ died in vain. Verily, if there was a commandment that could have given life, then righteousness should have been by the law. But that's not the case. We already covered this. I'm not going to say it again, although I'm probably going to say it a thousand more times. Um, But I say all of this again to try and draw this picture of the two the contrasting systems, the contrasting ideas of what was and what now is, right? Which is the reality in Christ. And the gaining of the knowledge of Jesus Christ is the impressing of Christ himself by the Holy Spirit as we lay hold of him by faith. Through our trials, our tribulations, just whatever. We lay hold of him by faith. We say yes and amen to the promises of God to what is true in Christ, which the Holy Spirit reminds us of, convicting us of righteousness, reminding us that we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Because the Holy Spirit's going to remind us of everything that is true in Christ and of us in Christ, that we are complete in Christ, that we have been delivered from the power of darkness and translated, transferred into the kingdom of his dear son, the, the Jesus Christ, the son of God, God the son. Hallelujah. So I hope you I hope you can maybe picture what I'm going for here because I think it's very important because this is like a nuanced aspect of the life of a Christian that I had no idea about when I was first born again and obviously we're all growing in this knowledge and we talk about this, but it's such a deep concept and it's very experiential as you go through these things and you lay hold of Christ and Christ is, you gain Christ and you are impressed more with Christ and transformed from glory to glory, from faith to faith. Because you can only learn about the wonderful attributes of the one who gave his life for us, Jesus Christ, by coming to him and saying, yo, what's up? Who are you? What you about? Do you love me? <laughs> All this stuff, right? Um, obviously, that's a, a joke um, about an actual situation, right? Because we do come to him. We do come to him as a living person because he is. He is alive. Hallelujah. We come to him and we say, you know, Lord, show me who, show me who you are. Show me what you're about. Show me the truth. I want to know you. And as we go through these trials and tribulations and lay hold of him, he shows himself faithful. We hold him at his word. 
We hold him at his word and he shows himself faithful every single time. The truth shall set us free. And the truth is Jesus Christ. So if you want to experience freedom, if you want to know freedom, if you want to taste your freedom in Christ, if you want to grow in the knowledge of Jesus Christ, which is life and freedom to us, you have to come to him who is all of those things. He is the source of all these things. He is those things. And it's by faith. It's just by faith. We don't judge according to the flesh and say, it's not happening fast enough. Believe me, I know. I'm a very impatient person and I'm dealing with a lot of things where I want them to go faster. I'm snapping my fingers. I want it to go faster. Or I want things to be done a certain way. And it's just irritating me and it's causing me stress. So I've got to drop the demand. I've got to drop the burden. I've got to drop these things that I'm trying to handle and fix. And I've got to come to the one who is life to me, who is life, who is truth, who is freedom, who is peace, who is joy. And I need him. We need him. We need the knowledge of him. It's the only way to have newness of life is by coming forward to Christ by faith because he has finished it all. He has cried out. It is finished. He did pay for all. He has already taken the demand or he's already paid the debt. And now we can freely approach him, not with no shame, with no um, remorse, with no withholding back. We can approach him, not on our own merits, but based off of his finished redemptive work. Yes, hello. So again, the perfecting of the conscience and maturity in, in the Christian life has absolutely nothing to do with the law. If you think it does, you're actually still a babe. You're actually still in a, a carnal mindset. If you think that the law is one, justifies you, or two, earns you fellowship, earns you rewards, earn you, earns you blessing, that it's the means for the Christian life and that discipleship or... Um, sanctification is by the law or the whatever it is. If it's your efforts in the law, if it's apart from Christ, then you don't understand. Drop it. Come to Christ by faith and trust him and his timing. You can't grow yourself in your own efforts and then also say, but I'm trusting God's timing. Although even though Many of us, we've experienced this process as we try to go and speed things up by putting on a face in religion that is a complete lie. Saying, oh, but I'm doing all these things. Why am I not growing? I've been reading my Bible six hours a day. How come I don't have all this spiritual revelation? Well, because it's God who gives the increase. Um, That's a whole separate subject. I don't know why I went over there, but... Just speaking on more instances of, and more, uh, again, just clarity of gaining Christ is not written with ink in tables of stone, referencing the law, referencing commandments, referencing all of that stuff, uh, ordinances. It is done with the spirit of the living God in our hearts as we Come forward by faith. And such trust have we through Christ to God. Where we can trust Christ, who is our high priest. He is the head. We are his body. We can trust him to do that. He is our sanctification. We can trust him. He is our life. He is our exceedingly great reward. People that are so focused on rewards and they got to go do this, that, and then the, I got to go feed these people and then I'll get reward. I got to read my Bible seven hours a day and then I'm going to get rewarded with knowledge. It just, you can't put God in your debt. And if you do, you're the debtor and you can never pay the debt. Period. That took me, that took me like a year or two to really understand when I was first boarding in. That took me some time to really understand and I went hard and nothing like, you know, David Benjamin who spent 20 years doing that. I am very glad that I am not him. 
because I can barely handle what I'm going through and I've only been boarding it for like, for like five years, I think. I can't, I would not be able to handle what David went through for 20 years or what so many of us went through for years. It doesn't matter the, the time frame or whatever, the length or the, the shortness of the time. It doesn't matter. We all have been through things, right? And the only person that truly understands our struggle and has been touched with the feeling of our infirmities is Christ himself. And there's only one way to be renewed. There's only one way to enjoy our justification, to enjoy the present tense of our salvation, the salvation of our souls today, rest. It's Christ himself who is our Sabbath rest, right? Who is our life, who is everything to us. But we have, we can trust, we have such trust through Christ to Godward, knowing that Christ is our high priest and he will do everything on our behalf. We don't have to go out shrinking back in unbelief, which is displeasing to God. If you want to be pleasing to God, come forward in faith and enjoy the fact that you have peace with him, that you have the endless grace of God and you can enjoy his grace. Don't shrink back in unbelief thinking, oh, well, I've got to go back to the law of commandments. Maybe that guy was right. I do need to tithe and maybe I do need to go. And I say tithe because it's just a, a common one that people throw out. Or I need to go get plugged into church. And if I don't go to church, then, um, then I'm going to be disciplined in, in a negative understanding and a wrong definition of discipline and what that actually means. And people will go and – people will go and allow – Leaven, allow accursed gospels, allow false gospels of institutional churches, and they'll go and they'll allow that because they think they're doing good by going and uh, going to a church. Well, I'm going to the church. I'm not forsaking the brethren, the gathering of the brethren, right? But there is no gathering. There is no fellowship with false gospels. There is no fellowship with antichrist doctrine. So you're still not, quote unquote, living out that scripture if you're going to churches who teach False doctrine, unsound doctrine, anything that is contrary to the doctrine of Christ. So you can't use that one. But anyways, people will go and do that thinking like, oh, well, I'm doing good because I'm still just going to church. No, you got to get out of those places. You got to get out. It's, it's much better. It's much better to suffer the persecution outside the camp with Christ and gain him and enjoy the taste and see that the Lord is good. That won't happen if you are constantly being bombarded with law, legalistic, unsound doctrine, teachings, vain jangling, and many of them false gospels coming from these pulpits of pastors who are, and I'm not labeling anyone, I'm just talking about unsaved people, pastors who are unsaved because if they believe what they preach, that you have to repent of all your sins and then you're saved, then they are unsaved because there is no mention of faith in the finished redemptive work of Jesus Christ. You're not going to gain anything from those pastors, quote unquote pastors. They, like it's going to show here, are ministering law that kills. They're not ministering Christ as life. So let's continue reading because I keep getting sidetracked. I'm sorry. My brain is all over the place. Such trust have we through Christ to Godward, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God. Again, our sufficiency is not of ourselves to go sanctify ourselves, to go earn rewards, to go earn blessing through the law. No, our sufficiency is of God. And we remember, we agree with the truth. We renew our minds in the truth of God, God's word that we are complete in Christ and that we have everything in Christ. We say, uh-uh-uh, to all the naysayers and all the people who say that you are lacking something. It doesn't matter what the thing is. I ain't lacking it. I'm in Christ. I have all things in Christ. I have been blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And Christ is with me right here, right now, as my life, walking with me, behind me, to the side of me, in front of me, above me, below me. He's everywhere. He is my righteousness. He is my clothing. He is my armor. I don't care what you're saying, person who keeps bringing the, le- the, the law, who keeps preaching a false gospel. I don't care what you have to say. I'm going to boast in your face and hopefully you'll hear the truth and see that it's a good thing to boast in Christ and trust in his finished redemptive work on the cross. I'm going to boast and say, no, I am complete in Christ. My sufficiency is of God. I will boast in my weakness. I'm not strong in myself, in the flesh, in the law. There is no strength to boast in, in yourself and in the law. And if you think you have something to boast in, go read Philippians where Paul says everything that he is, 
or he, he, he was boasting in his flesh as a fool, he says. If they have something to boast in, I more. Now listen to me. As a fool who boasts in himself, look, I have more to boast in, and I count it all as dung for the excellency of the knowledge of Jesus Christ. So there is no boasting in your own strength. There's only boasting in Christ. Our sufficiency is of God. Hallelujah. Who also has made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. Hallelujah. But if the ministration of death was written and engraven in stones, was glorious, so that the children of Israel could not steadfastly behold the face of Moses for the glory of his countenance, which glory was to be done away. Again, so many people are holding on to a fading glory, a shadow pointing to the good, the good, better, perfect thing to come, which is Jesus Christ. So many are saying, Moses is, Moses is my God, Moses is my Savior. No, no, no. Pointing to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. How shall not the ministration of the Spirit be rather glorious? Again, showing the stark contrast between the two. The fading glory of the law, which was a shadow of good things to come as a schoolmaster to point everyone to Jesus Christ. And then the ministration of the Spirit, which is glorious, which is Christ himself, which is eternal life, which is peace and righteousness. True righteousness. The righteousness of God, which is by faith in Jesus Christ. The righteousness which was witnessed by the law and prophets, but was manifested apart from the law. Jesus Christ is not righteous because he kept the law. Jesus Christ is righteous. Period. Hallelujah. For if the ministration of condemnation be glory, stark contrast, if you are going to hold on to that and it's only the ministration of condemnation and death, come now, come forward, have faith, believe, much more doth the ministration of righteousness exceed in glory. The ministration of Christ himself. For even that which was made glorious had no glory in this respect by reason of the glory that excelled. Again, it had the law really had no glory because in this respect, there is a ministration of righteousness which exceeds in glory, which is a glory that remains. It's true glory. Hallelujah. For if that which is done away was glorious, the law, much more that which remains is glorious. The ministration of righteousness, of the spirit, of eternal life, of Christ. Hallelujah. Seeing then that we have such a hope, because we do, our living hope. That's my screen name in a lot of things, living hope. Because man, that idea, that reality, it's not even an idea, that reality that our hope is alive and living today here with us as our life. Mm, and it's sure. It's a sure thing. The anchor of our soul, Jesus Christ, our living hope. Not, I hope I get that new car. No, he is hope. And he is true and he is steadfast and he is sure. Hallelujah, the anchor of our soul. Seeing that, that we have such hope, we use great plainness of speech. I don't got to make no fancy things up. I, we talk plainly. We preach Christ and him crucified. We preach the word. I don't have to change definitions. I don't have to take things out of context. I don't have to twist and invert and guile and manipulate in order to get my way, which is self-righteousness, because that's what people do when they want their own righteousness. They do all those tricks. We don't have to do that. We have, we have such a hope, and we can speak that truth. We can speak the truth. We can speak the truth of Jesus Christ plainly, preaching him and him crucified. And the truth does its thing. Just like my video the other, the other week about free grace, I don't have to add that it's free. I know the grace of God. In sincerity, brothers and sisters, we know the grace of God in truth, in the truth of Jesus Christ. So we speak Christ and him crucified plainly. I don't have to add labels. I don't have to take, add or take away from the word. Our hope is sure, and it's in Jesus Christ. And not as Moses, again, seeing them that we have such a hope, we use great plainness of speech. Christ is on display, hallelujah, in him being preached. Not as Moses, which put a veil over his face, that the children of God could not steadfastly look to the end of that which is abolished. They couldn't see. <sighs> It's what I was saying um, 
earlier, I don't know if it's in this video because I don't know, I have no concept of time or in my last video about you don't get to know the attributes of God. You don't get to know the person and work of Jesus Christ through the law being veiled. You come forward by faith in Jesus Christ to get to know Jesus Christ. If I want to get to know my dad, I go to my dad and I ask him, Hey dad, what were you like as a kid? And like, how did you, how did you treat people? And like, did you yell at waiters or did you like sports or whatever? I'm not going to go to someone else who knows nothing about my dad and ask them, yo, do you know my dad? What was he like? What? That, that makes no sense. I'm not going to go to someone who, who knows nothing about uh, spaceships and say, hey, do you know the intricacies of spaceships? I'm going to go to a rocket scientist. And I'm going to be like, yo, what's up with these spaceships? And he's like, you, they, you put in fuel, it goes boom, boom, and they fly. <laughs> Except he's going to give a lot more detail than that, right? Um, and he's going to enjoy sharing that because that's his passion. That's where uh, he like, that's what that's the thing that he enjoys. Right. And I use that as a picture to show again, we use great plainness of speech. If we want to know Christ, we come to Christ himself and it's an enjoyment to come and preach Christ and him crucified. We don't have to use big swelling words. We don't have to go out and speak about or vain jangle about things we know nothing about or intruding into things they know nothing about, right? We don't vain jangle. We don't talk about the law in order to know Christ. We come to Christ himself. You guys get it. I'm belaboring that. I'm saying it over and over again. Again, and not Moses. Seeing, seeing then that we have such a hope, we use great plainness of speech, and not as Moses, which put a veil over his face, that the children of God could not steadfastly look to the end of that which is abolished. But their minds were blinded. For until this day... Remaineth the same veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away in Christ. The veil is only done away in Christ. And that veil being taken away in Christ, the clarity and the depth of the contrast between the two, law and grace, uh, the letter that kills and uh, the ministration of, of spear of life of Christ becomes clearer and clearer as we continue to come to Christ in faith. That contrast, that uh, the, the separation between the two becomes clearer and clearer the more that we come to Christ and we just, we, we come to him in faith. And, you know, the Lord gives the increase at his perfect timing. Again, that veil, we, we, the, like Galatian error, for instance, a lot, a lot of people will say, oh no, of course I'm not justified by works. But then they have that accursed gospel of, oh, but I need to earn rewards. I need to earn favor. I need to make sure I'm still in fellowship with God by works. There is part of the veil that has not been taken away because they continue to go to the law for every aspect of the Christian life. And they're not growing in the knowledge of Jesus Christ and they're carnal babes in Christ. They're saved because they believed at one point that Jesus Christ died for their sins, was buried and rose again on the third day. But then they went to the law for the rest of the Christian life, which is that's there is no life through the law, as we obviously have been talking about. So the clarity at which they see that veil being taken away was only for like this watered down version of justification. And now they have that accursed gospel where they need to be perfected in the flesh. But there's only one way for that veil to continue to be removed for you to grow in the knowledge of Jesus Christ and for you to see the difference. And that is, again, to come to Christ. As we preach Christ and him crucified and people come under the hearing of faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The Lord gives the increase. I hope that makes sense. Again, I'm, I'm sure it does, but in my mind, it's this giant idea that is connected in all over these places, but I can't get the words out. Um, but I think you understand. Again, we come to Christ and we see clearer and clearer the veil and how it has been done away in Christ and how Christ is everything, right? Hallelujah. Uh, but even unto this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Again, come to Christ. Come to Christ. If you don't understand everything completely, that's okay. None of us do. Come to Christ in faith. Believe him. Know that you are saved. Know that he has paid it all. He cried out, it is finished. Believe. And he will prove and show you that he is faithful and he will build you up in the full assurance of faith. He will build you up in the knowledge of himself and you will see 
the difference between the two systems and how it is absolutely 100% grace and 0% our dead works in religion. It is 0% our works. It is 0% our effort. It is 100% faith in Jesus Christ for every single moment of the Christian life. Nevertheless, when it shall be taken away, or nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Now, the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Brothers and sisters, you are free in Christ. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith you have been given in Christ and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Again, don't go back to Moses. Come forward by faith in Jesus Christ. Stand in Christ by faith. You have liberty in Christ. You are not, the sin is not, uh, it's, sin is not ruling over you. Condemnation is not ruling over you. No. The blood of Jesus Christ purges our evil conscience from dead works. The blood of Jesus Christ, we come forward by faith in the blood of Jesus Christ, remembering what he has done, and it washes us. He renews us. Uh, Hallelujah. So that we don't go back to dead works, thinking there's something separating us, thinking there's more to pay for. No, it's all Jesus. It's all the time. he, He did it all. Hallelujah. But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. This is something I want to talk about because this is a thing that is uh, sort of what, I mean, we've already been talking about it, but we're beholding the Lord, the glory of the Lord. As we lay hold of Him, and as we come forward to him by faith, we are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Again, we preach Christ and him crucified. We come forward to him. We are transformed, not a work of emulation of ourselves in the law. Emulation is a work of the flesh. If you try to be more like Jesus and set about to do that in your own strength, you're in the flesh and you're going to have a really hard and rough time because if you're going back and trying to emulate how to be like Christ through the law, you're going to strengthen sin. You're going to grow in the knowledge of sin and how corrupt the flesh is. And if you use the law lawfully, it should point you to Jesus Christ. And you should say, yep, never mind. I am dead to the law. I need to trust the Lord. <laughs> I need to trust the Lord. It's his timing. I can't look at myself and my performance and try to come to understand what everything means by looking at myself in the flesh according to the law and blah, blah, blah. No, I need to look to Christ in faith. Behold him, laying hold of him, coming forward in faith, whatever you want to say, preaching the gospel to yourself, whatever you want to say, it's all the same thing in my head. Beholding in a glass the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. The Spirit that worketh miracles among you, in Galatians 3, doeth it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Are you going to be transformed by the Spirit of the Lord by going to the ministration of death and condemnation? Or are you going to be transformed by the Spirit of the Lord, by coming forward in faith to Him, in the ministration of the spirit of life, of righteousness. It's one or the other. Um, this is a longer video than I did. I normally don't do two videos a, uh, or two long videos a day. My throat hurts. Also, I don't know how to preach the word other than to yell. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> I really don't. I mean, I, I guess I'm not yelling, but I like, I'm raising my voice and there's, I just don't know how to preach the word otherwise. Um, but that's how I speak. So deal with it. Um, or don't your choice. But anyways, I, I think there was a ton of nuggets in this, man. I hope you stay till the end because this, this last verse really ties it together. This concept that I'm talking about, right? Again, We all with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory, from faith to faith, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Impressing himself, Christ is impressed into us by the Holy Spirit, through the Holy Spirit, by the Spirit of the living God, not in the tables of stone, not written with ink, Again, Christ is pressed into us, impressed, sorry, by the Spirit of the living God, by the Holy Spirit, from glory to glory, from faith to faith, 
It is His work. It is His life. It is His high priestly ministry. It is His ministering and nourishing and building us up together in Himself by faith. As we come and we behold Him, we come forward to Him, we believe in Him, we lay hold of Him. Again, same thing. We renew our minds in the truth of the Word. All of these things mean the same thing to me. It is coming forward in faith. So don't be fooled by people say you got to be more like Christ and then talk and then vain jangle and preach the law to you. They're speaking emulation. They are literally saying you got to be more like Christ by getting strong in your flesh. They don't know anything. They can be saved and not know anything and they can be carnal babes, but that's an accursed that's part of an accursed gospel, I believe, and you should mark and avoid those people if they double down in that and they don't hear if you preach the truth, if you uh, rebuke them with the truth, right? Say no no no, it's not it's not by the works of the law for anything. It's by faith. To him who worketh not is the reward reckoned of... Uh, okay, we're going to go to that verse before I butcher it. For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath were up to glory, but not before God. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. And brothers and sisters, we know that there is no mixture... There is no mixture at all. Not any aspect of the Christian life is by works, even though justifi- while justification is by faith. Because yes, justification is by faith. We are saved by grace through faith. And we live by faith. There is no part of the Christian life that is, that is by works. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Hallelujah. Even as David describeth the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works. I am stumbling over these words. Let's try it again. Even as David also describeth the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works. Saying, blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. Hallelujah. So brothers and sisters, um, that was a bit of a, a tangent, but... Don't listen to people who preach the law, who vain jangle. It's not even, yeah, dude, they got administration of death and condemnation. I hope you came to that conclusion after listening to this because that's all what 2 Corinthians 3 is talking about is <laughs> the, the difference between administration of the law, of the letter that kills, and the administration of the spirit of righteousness of life in Christ. Hallelujah. Um, yeah, right. Peace out. Bye.